Welcome back to a new one on this channel and on this occasion is Meld and this is an interesting synthesizer. You can create conventional sounds but I think getting unconventional sounds is what it does best. So you have two oscillators, the A and the B, and both oscillators are independent. I can play both at once, but I can disable the B, just play the A or even disable the, B, the A and the B, and I just, you know, get nothing. Since they are independent, they, they get their own envelopes, they get the filter and then the output. So if I play both and I go down on the, on the uh, B, I'm gonna go all the way down on the oscillator B, right? And this is why you see A and B all over the place. You can do something very specific on the A and then do something completely different on the B. I'm gonna turn off the oscillator B and just use the A. So uh, the oscillators are really special. You get the basic shapes that you see here and then you get two macros. So right here you can sweep the table, the uh, wave table from, you know, from sine wave to a triangle to saw to square and so on and so on and so on and then for this one you get the tone now the thing is that this one gives you a lot of different oscillators you can you know swap them by clicking now if i click here you have all the options and you have a lot of different options as you can see the basic shapes like you know the normal uh, common uh, waveforms that you could get on a synthesizer but then you get different ones like dual shapes then you have a sub then you have a fold which is going to be fm and then you have like bubble so some weird oscillators so this reminds me of the Arturia Microfeek. I'm not saying this is a, a copy, but you know, the idea of having very different oscillators is just, you know, it reminds me of the Microfeek. And I think it's just great because you can get conventional sounds, but you can get other, you know, type of sounds. Now the macros, the ones that you have right here, depend on the oscillator that you select. In the case of the basic shapes, you have the shape and then you have the tone. But then if I go to the other ones, notice that you have different uh, macros and they all again all depend on the oscillator that you're using if I go maybe to bubbles which is again the weird one we can go up in density and then we go up and spread yeah if I go to crackle you get that crackle more crackle less crackle so yeah really cool oscillators you can get the you get the conventionals or you get you know the weird ones each engine, and I'm gonna go maybe back to the basic shapes, can change octaves, as you could assume. And then you have the semitones, go down all the way up to 12, or all the way down to 12, and then you have sense. And all of this, you know, makes sense. It's very common for a synthesizer. But then when you go to other shapes, you have this symbol right here, the flat and the sharp symbol. Well, all of this is just the scales, the user scales that you get on Ableton right now. So I can go maybe to the basic shapes and I still get octaves, semitones and scents. But if I go right here, notice that at the top I have a scale. If I go here and turn it on, now instead of uh, semitones, it's going to be using that scale. So I can use the different tones of the scale and all of this just you know make it makes it makes everything easier and okay so these are the oscillators and if you think about this they're pretty simple right you turn them up turn them on you choose uh something and then you change the motion or you change the uh, macro a and the macro b and that's it now everything about this synthesizer is going to be the matrix but you know we are not there yet all right, so you get two different envelopes, the amp envelope and the modulation. The amp controls how the volume comes out uh, of the synthesizer. In this case, is gonna you're gonna have one for the oscillator A, and you have a different amp envelope for the oscillator B. So, like I said before, it's like having two different synthesizers. So I'm gonna go back to the A. Right here, you get an ADSR, which is the most common type of uh, envelope that you could get. Right, so with the attack, the decay, the sustain. And the release, maybe I'm gonna get a little bit more harmonics. Just a very common ADSR, and I'm not teaching you anything new. You can change the slopes from the dots right here, or you can change them from here to linear, from exponential, and logarithmic. Okay, so I'm not teaching you anything new. All the other synthesizers from Ableton have the same envelope. Now, uh, just like the other ones, you have four different functions. And if you don't know about them, you have the trigger function, which is pretty much is going to ignore the uh, release and the sustain. And every time I play a note, it's going to keep playing it until it dies. 
I can go all the way down and sustain, and if I play it, that is it. I have no sustain, but it just will last as much as the decay lasts. Right, so it's like pretty much disabling the sustain, the release. Then you have the loop, which is, you know, a loop. If I play a key and hold it, and I'm holding the key right now, it's going to loop whatever you have right here on your configuration. If I make the decay longer, of course, it's going to take more time. But if I make it shorter, we're going to start getting a loop. The sustain in this case works. And then we have the release again. As you add more time, is the loop is going to take longer. And I'm just, you know, holding one single key. Okay, so, you know, the other one is going to be the AD loop. It works just like the loop, but in this case, is going to take into account the attack and the decay, not so much of the sustain. And the release in this case. If I go up on the release, you know, it's just not, not using it. Alright, so... Those are the four different functions that you get. And like I said before, uh, on this, uh, on the Ableton world, all the other synthesizers, they use pretty much the same envelope. Since you have an envelope for the A and an envelope for the B, maybe I could go maybe uh, to the B and do something else. Something like that. Something like that. Why not? I'm gonna detune it. So we are getting sound for both. If I go to the A, maybe I can just create a slow attack and this will only affect the A, and maybe I can go to the B and just less sustain, more release, more decay. And we are gonna be getting, you know, different tones, different flavors, based on the different envelopes. The thing is that sometimes you want to have the same, and maybe you just change the configuration right here and you have something different. Well, what you can do, you can go right here to this link and when you link it, both envelopes are going to be the same. And both are following whatever it is that you're doing on the A. So whenever you link, the B is going to mimic the A. Now, still, if you change this, if you unclick it, it's going to go back to what you had from before. Another thing that you maybe didn't notice is that the B has a delay function, which is going to be delaying the amp, pretty much. Alright, so that's uh, how the AMP envelope works. Now then you have the modulation envelope. And this one is just for that. It's just to use as a modulation source. Now by default, it's not connected to anything. And you're going to find that with this synthesizer, a lot of the things that we usually get on a you know a conventional synthesizer are just not connected. And you need to manually do it through the matrix. If I go back to this envelope, it's pretty much the same envelope. It's a little bit different. You get the common ADSR. This works completely the same. And you even have the four different functions, right? So then at the bottom, you have the initial, which is going to be, uh, if I go up, it's going to start, you know, up, or maybe it's going to start down. Then you have the peak, you can narrow the peak, down or up. And then you have the final. And like I said before, you do have this envelope on other synthesizers uh, from Ableton. So you're not getting anything new. If you want to change the curve, you just need to click on the tiny dot and you get the slope. Yeah. We need to map the modulation envelope to something in order to use it. And for that, we need to talk about the matrix. But first, I want to show you the filters. And then we're going to talk about the most important part of the synthesizer, which is the matrix. I'm going to disable the B and I'm going to just use the A because they are the same uh, filter. And I'm going to play with something with a little bit more harmonics. And right here, you have your cutoff frequencies. If I go down, it's going to chop the higher frequencies and then it'll go up. And right here, the Q is going to be your resonance. Now, still, all of this depends on the filter. So what Ableton did, took all the filters that they made and added a few, and you have a lot of different filters. You have the SVF, which is going to be the low to band pass, to high pass, and then to notch. So it's a state variable filter. That's what it does, is a, yeah, a type of filter. But then if you want the classic ones, you have the low pass, high pass, maybe low pass 12, and you get that classic wow. And uh, on this one, notice that you have a different property. Since it's not an SVF, it's a drive, you can get drive on this one. 
and all the different filters they can do something else um, high pass band pass you have a low pass different type of low pass and then you have you know vowels and it comes uh, type of filters and you know you even get a phaser now so it's really really cool it is all the sounds that you can get from something very simple like the filters and the shapes you know the uh, oscillator engine all right so the, f the uh, filters are pretty pretty simple you get the same options uh you know the same on both so if i go here it's just pretty much the same i'm gonna go back to maybe default something like that and i want you to notice that usually when we use a synthesizer just a conventional synthesizer we can modulate the cutoff of the filter right and we use an envelope to do it but right here we have nothing we this is not connected to an lfo and it's not connected to an envelope we need to manually do it so let's talk about the matrix and right so if i go to matrix you can see the tiny little matrix right here and do not escape this section because the matrix is the most important part of the synthesizer now this one uh, this view it's fine it's cool and you get one for the a and one for the b but the thing is that you have a lot of things going on right here you need to go right here and expand it and you can see everything that you can do with the matrix for each engine you have a tab you have the a and then you have the b so you can do the same on the a and the same on the b it's the same modulation sources and the same targets and i know that all of this looks a little bit confusing especially if you're starting but don't worry i'm gonna just take it slow how a modulation matrix works is that you have a source and then you have a destination or a target in other words something that will modulate something at the top you have the who is going to modulate and at the left you have you have the what will modulate so for example if i want to do a simple cut of modulation you know like we get on a, on a normal <laughs> synthesizer where i play a key and this goes up and then goes down every time i play a key well we need to manually do it so i want to use an envelope i'm gonna need to go to envelopes and you can use the app but in this case i'm going to be using the modulation envelope if i touch it right here at the top it's going to say modulation and envelopes and you have the amp and you have the m envelope which is going to be the modulation so i want to use this source the mm and then what do i want to move i want to move this control so when you click it it's going to be highlighted right here so you know that's cool you know you don't need to look it up on a on a list when you touch it it's going to highlight and then when you go here you can decide how much you want to modulate into positives or you can do negatives so in this case i'm going to go to positives maybe i'm going to go down so now every time i play a key the modulation envelope is modulating the cut of filter up and down by using whatever motion that we have right here maybe i can make it a little bit like that and that's how it works we can even go into negatives maybe if i go to positives and now it's going to start backwards of course right here each of the targets it shows you how the modulation it's happening how it's modulating it now in this case i want to go to positives i'm gonna go down and then go to positives and that's pretty much it that's uh, how the module in the matrix uh, works and remember you need to pick a source and then assign it to a target or to a destination let's say i want to modulate the q well if i click right here it's going to tell me filter macro so you're not going to find a q of filter uh, right here in this synthesizer it uses the the keyword macro so this is the macro one of the oscillator macro two so yeah that's how it works so if i wanted to modulate this with maybe an lfo i can go right here to the lfo and as I go up, it's going to modulate the Q. Maybe, maybe it's just a little bit too much. There you go. So what if I wanted to modulate this like, like a wavetable synthesizer? Well, again, we could use an envelope and use the same envelope. If I touch this, it's oscillator macro number one. Or maybe go down if we are up. Same with the tone, maybe I'm going to be using the LFO and just play something else. So that's it. 
You just need to find your destination and then modulate it with something. So right now, everything I'm doing, it's doing it to the A. If I go to the B, none of that is happening. It's just happening to the A. And this is, you know, something cool that you can modulate. You can modulate the A and leave the B untouched. But if you want to, you know, grab everything that you did and pass it to the B or the same thing from B to the A, you can just go here and maybe copy to the B and it will take whatever you did on the A, put it on the B or take whatever you did on the B and put it on the A. So now both oscillators are doing the same. Maybe I could use a different, you know. Right, so super cool. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. Now the thing is that we need to discuss everything else. We didn't discuss the LFOs. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Starting from a fresh default patch, uh, we need to discuss what what's uh, you know everything else. We already know what the amp, what the envelopes do. We need to talk about the modulation. You know we uh, didn't discuss the LFO. Uh, we're gonna do it in a minute. And then you have this spread. Now this spread is gonna is, is linked to the spread that you have right here. So if I uh, play a chord and maybe I'm gonna turn off the B and get uh, something a little bit more noticeable, I'm gonna go up on the spread. And notice that the voices get detuned. So this one by default is 50%. And if I go maybe to the spread, this one is going to modify or affect the spread control right here. If I go all the way up, it's just, you know, crazy. So it's just scaling that value. And you can use this, you know, to fine tune the detune. That's why it says detune. Again, by default, you have a 50%. The other modulation sources are expressions. You know, the velocity, pitch. This one, it's going to be the, the pitch bent wheel. So let's just, you know, give it a test. I'm going to go to the filter. And if I, you know, play something, I want this to move depending on the velocity of my keys. So if I play soft, it's not going to be very aggressive. But if I play hard, it's going to open a lot more. Then you have the pitch, and the pitch is going to be the pitch frequency. And I'm going to, have to remove this one, and I'm going to do the same right here. So depending on which key I play, it's going to scale the modulation more or less. So if I play lower keys, it's going to be, you know, that value is going to scale it less. And if I play, play a higher key, it's going to be a different outcome. You can, you can, I'm going to go aggressive and go down. You can see it right here when I play a key. What is that? If I play higher keys, this is my center point. Maybe I'm gonna go here. This is gonna be my center point. I'm playing a higher key, and as I go up, it's moving up. But if I cl get closer to the middle C, it's nothing. And then if I go lower to lower keys, it's gonna go down. So that's the modulation. Now, I'm gonna go back, and then we have the PB, which is gonna be the pitch bend wheel. I'm gonna go up. If I play something, and I'm gonna go up on the pitch bend, we can see it modulating. And I'm moving uh, with my uh, MIDI controller, the pitch bend. And you can see how I'm moving it right here, how the source, it's, you know, modulating. All right, so that's the pitch bend. Then you have the press, which is gonna be the pressure. This is aftertouch. So if I play soft, nothing happens. But if I apply more pressure, and for this one, you need to have an after a keyboard or a controller, with aftertouch, we're gonna get that modulation. Gonna double, I'm gonna double click, and this one it's going to be the mod wheel, not the pitch bend. So if I use my mod wheel on my keyboard, I get it. And the other one, this one is uh, cool. You have a random. So if I go up, the random is not moving because I'm pressing one single key, but the random is gonna be generated every time I play a new key. So if I just keep tapping keys. The random is gonna go up or is gonna be is gonna go down. And depends on how aggressive it is, how it's gonna modulate the uh, cutoff. This key is gonna go again aggressive. And every note is gonna generate a new random modulation. 
And then you have the note and the slide. Uh, these are MPE type of modulations. So as you can see, it's just not that hard. You use an LFO, you use your envelopes and your expressions, and you create the different, you modulate uh, whatever it is that you want on the synthesizer. Now then you have the other side of things, which is going to be the cross modulation. And this pretty much it means what mod source from A, in this case I'm on the A, uh, will modulate the B, or which modulation from the B will modulate the A. If I go to the basic shapes, I don't need to turn it on. I'm going to go to the B, and I'm going to be using the modulation source. You know what? I'm going to use the LFO, and I'm going to go fast. So now, the LFO of the, I'm going to go back to the A, the LFO of the B is going really, really fast, as you can see it right here. You can always maybe go back, and I'm going to go back to the A, and I'm going to be using something from the B to modulate something from the A. Let's say I want to move the shape of the A. So I'm standing on the oscillator macro number one, and I'm going to use the LFO of the B to modulate the shape of the A. This is what the uh, cross modulation means. Same with the envelope, the mod, the mod envelope. Maybe I can do something else like the macro two. And that's how it works. You get exactly the same for the B, but in this case, you're going to be modulating the A. All right, so I'm going to go back to a default patch, and now we need to do this because the LFOs. Okay, so let's talk about the LFOs. You have mainly two LFOs. The LFO 1, which is a more capable type of LFO, then the LFO 2 is going to be a simple type of LFO, and then the LFO 1, it's the uh, whatever the LFO 1 out outputs, but modify it by something. So I'm going to go first to the LFO 1. Maybe I'm going to turn off this one. And I'm going to be bringing a little bit more harmonics. And now what I want to do, I want to use the LFO 1. So we have it right here. And I want to modulate the filter frequency. So we go there and we modulate it. Simple as that. Now, you have different types. You have the basic shapes. But the things that all the other ones, they will do something different. But they, all, they will all change depending on what you're doing on the macros which is going to be the chance, the length, for in the case of pulsate. But then if I go to this one, it's going to be steps or pulses. And right here, you need to change the controls in order to get something different. Maybe if I go up in rate. If I go to alternate, it's going to be something else. And of course, if you go to basic shapes, you get your basic shapes, but you also get a fault. So yeah, really cool type of LFO. So you can go down in rate and use hertz, or you can sync it to whatever you have on your DAW. You can even flip the face of the LFO, so you can start on a different place. And then you have the re-trigger, which is a very common option that you get on most LFOs. And if you don't know what this is, I'm going to be tapping the keys like this, and notice that the R is off. So the re-trigger means that every time I play a key, the modulation, the LFO, needs to re-trigger and restart from the same position. In this case, it's off. So this is why I'm sometimes going up, sometimes down. It's not very consistent. So when you turn on the R, it will always start from the same place. And you can even see it right here on the modulation. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. This will make it always start from the beginning. You can, of course, change the face and start from a different place. So this is the LFO 1. You know, it's not a very super highly complicated LFO, but you know, it's just, you know, much, a lot more complicated or complex than a simple LFO. Double click this and go back to default. And now we need to talk about the LFO. And this is the simple one. If I go here, we have the most common waveforms that we get. A sine wave tri triangle, so up, then so down then rent rectangle, which is, you know, a square, a pulse, and then you get sample and hold, which is going to be random. And the only thing, again, you need to do is just to map it to something. Maybe I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go to LFO 2, and you can go in Hertz, or maybe sync it. You even have your re-trigger. And when you are in Hertz, you can change the phase and then do re-trigger. So it's the same idea, but just with uh, basic waveforms. You have no macros on this one. And that's it, you know, LFO 1 and then LFO 2. Now, the most uh, interesting one is going to be the LFO 1 FX.
Now for this one, I'm going to start with the default patch so we can all start from the same place. I'm going to turn off the oscillator B and maybe I'm going to be doing something like this. Now, uh, right here, it will give you a visual uh, confirmation of whatever it is that you're doing. This one takes whatever the alpha one is going to output. If I change the rate on the one, this one is going to change. If I change the shape, it's going to change. So it's just taking whatever comes out from the alpha one. So it doesn't matter what, it needs the alpha one. Then you have two slots right here. And each of the knobs that you have right here at the bottom, they belong, it belongs to the slot or the effects that you have at the top. If you click right here, you have a lot of different types or, or methods. If I go to none, notice that this goes to none and this one goes to none. And I'm gonna go to none for both. So when the LFO outputs go into here, we can do something right here and modify the output of the one and all the different methods that you have right here is what you can use. Maybe I'm going to be using an offset. When you use an offset, it's going to offset the output of the LFO one. That's how it works. So maybe I want to do, I want to use this type of modulation, I want to change it, but then maybe I want to go to a fade in and I want to fade the modulation in and it's going to change it with the effects. So that's how, you know, the LFO one effects works. And if I want to modulate it with something, I can go to LFO one. And there we go. We're going to be getting that type of modulation. It starts low and then goes up. Now maybe we can keep changing it. Maybe I'm going to go to clipper and a ramp. As you can see, it's a little bit different from, you know, the LFO that we have right here. And you have a lot of different, you know, uh, a lot of different waveforms uh, or effects or modifiers, if you want to call them modifiers. I like to call them modifiers more than effects. But yeah, they're really, really cool. But always remember that the shape of the LFO one is the one that is in charge. If you change this one, it's going to change this one. All right, so back to defaults. And just to finish, you have this section of the synthesizer. And this one is going to be pretty simple. If I play something, maybe I'm going to go to the A, uh, because it's the same for both. Uh, you have the center, or left, or right, which is going to be the panning, right? So you can pan the A to the left, and then the other one to the right, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you can do something like this. Then you have the tone, and this one is just a filter just a filter like you would get on a pedal or you have the tone well this is the same deal then you have the, uh, the volume of the oscillator engine and if you want you can use a limiter so if it goes loud the limiter is gonna let you know when it's chopping the peaks and then you can go here you can make it mono if you want to and you can of course use poly up to 12 different voices so if you want to use a chord you can but if you want to change it to mono and play a chord you cannot do it remember to change it back to poly now if of course if you use more voices and you use the spread and the stack it's going to use more resources now the spread is going to take those take those uh, voices and it's gonna detune them and spread them then you have the stack and you can do a stack of two and a stack of three. And this is the, you know, the uh, common unison. It's going to take three voices and stack them. If your the spread is all the way down, you're not going to get anything. You need to just spread the voices in order to get that unison. And notice that we are still on poly. And then we are doing a unison type of uh, deal. So I can go to 12 and if I want to play a triad, I can. So it's poly unison, uh, poly unison, let's say. Can you use mono and stack the voices? Yes, you can. And you can do two or you can do three. You cannot do more. All right, so, you know, that's uh, how it works. And then at the bottom, if you want, you have a drive, nice little drive and it's gonna crush everything. And then at the end, you have the overall volume for both of the engines. 
Remember, you have your settings right here to your portamento and your glissando, and you know, the scale and the key tracking. And that's pretty much it. And okay, so if you liked all of this, please like and subscribe. And this channel is supported by viewers only. If you want to buy me a coffee to say thanks and help the channel keep going on, you can. You have links on the description for PayPal, YouTube Thanks, and Patreon.